Shin splints are an injury that are not uncommon for people who are on their feet a lot, especially runners. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna go in depth on what they are, how you get them, who gets them, and how you should treat them. Also a little bit about how we actually treat them at Mobility Doc. I'm Doc John. I'm Dr. Chloe Costigan. And we are the owners of Mobility Doc, and what we focus on is how to keep people doing what they love to do. This topic of shin splints is near and dear to my heart currently because um, I can't run right now because I have a pretty bad case of shin splints on my right side. Dr. Chloe went through all the stages of injury, including denial, <laughs> all the way to acceptance, and then finally creating a treatment plan for herself, uh, as well as I've been treating her uh, at home because we're married. <laughs> and we also have a really awesome blog that was released recently with the help of both Dr. Chloe and Sasha. And I suggest you take a look at that because it's an in-depth first person story about what Dr. Chloe's been going through and how she helped herself. Shin splints are a reflection of the fact that your lower body is having a hard time accommodating to the stress that you're putting on that. Whether it's weight, um, volume, say of like running, jumping, um, or intensity. So who comes into Mobility Doc, gets on your table and talks about shin splints the most? So I think of it as kind of being two different people, right? So there's the person who they're, they're introducing some amount of like running, sprinting, jumping, um, and their body is just having a hard time accommodating to it. The other person that comes in is someone who is pretty seasoned in terms of running, but something has changed. So they might be starting to do more speed work. They might be starting to do some more elevation um, or just some more volume. Yeah, we see a lot of lower leg issues in people that are doing a lot of hills, especially. Shin splints, I find, are not uncommon in weightlifters and powerlifters who are really pushing their squats, especially in weightlifters when they're working on getting depth with their butt all the way down, the uh, butt to grass kind of position. Uh, at that very end of the squat, you can get a good amount of stretch and stress into the shins. Typically, shin splints present um, in two instances throughout the day. So first thing in the morning, um, when all that musculature is a little bit more stiff, um, it might be painful to walk or at least feel like there's like significant tightness and discomfort. And then the other one is when you go to load that area. So whether it's that you're beginning to run, um, you're squatting, you're going up a hill, you'll feel um, some pain in the um, sometimes in the front of the shin and in varying heights. So it can be up a little bit higher. It can be a little bit closer to the ankle. Sometimes people even feel it in through the back of the leg where it feels almost like a, like a calf cramp or some tightness. Yeah, that's why I should definitely watch all the way through this video because Dr. Chloe is gonna dive deep in nerdum of anatomy yes. and she's gonna show you like in great detail the entire span of the muscles that are a part of shin splints, including the connective tissue. And then towards the very end of this, we're gonna not only show you what you can do, that's a great primer, before you run or squat or do your activities, but also how we treat it. If you feel like you've benefited or could benefit from, from what we're sharing with you and you know anyone else who could benefit as well, just give a simple share, send it to a friend, uh, help us to reach more people and help more people. When we talk about shin splints, we're actually talking about a few different areas, but let me orient you though to some of this anatomy. We'll first begin with the bones and the connective tissue. So when we talk about our shin, we're actually talking about two bones. So you have your tibia and your fibula. The other thing that's really important and oftentimes um, isn't really talked about is this interosseous membrane. This is this irregular connective tissue that connects the tibia to the fibula. So it allows for a little bit more support, but it's not as rigid as bone. The thing that's really important about this is that a lot of muscles attach to it. All this red here means that this is where some muscular attachment is. So if we're looking at the back of the leg, your calf muscle, your gastroxoleus, this doesn't really connect to that interosseous membrane in the same way but some of the muscles that are deep to that do. So all of these ones in the back, this connects to the interosseous membrane, as well as some of these muscles in the front of the shin. Now, the reason why that's important is because shin splints are an irritation of the muscle 
the connective tissue, as well as the bone. So in our effort to improve um, our shin splints, we really have to be kind of focused on all of those areas. You feel shin splints the most in the morning time because all of these muscles are really stiff. So in through the front and also in through the back. As you get moving a little bit more, then the muscle and also the interosseous membrane, this connective tissue, this begins to loosen up. So let's talk about the difference between a stress reaction, stress fracture versus shin splints. So the same areas are still involved. So that connective tissue, that interosseous membrane and the bone and the muscle. But what ends up happening is that something like shin splints can turn into something like a stress reaction or stress fracture. What ends up happening is that the bone ends up getting abnormal amounts of irritation through different areas. So if you come, now this is the front of the leg. So you might palpate through that front part of the bone and feel some point tenderness, that can be an indication that there's some type of stress reaction. Also, sometimes what happens is some of the muscle begins to pull on the bone, on the periosteum, which can create that stress reaction or stress fracture. Just one other note, um, sometimes people talk about the idea of compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome is a medical emergency. So that is when the pressure builds in the compartments. Um, so there's a front compartment, there's a side compartment and a back compartment. When that pressure builds in your lower leg to a point where um, you can have like permanent nerve damage um, and then also damage to the arteries. These are not shin splints. So the primer we have for you for shin splints is a, is a truly a pretty great one uh, and you're going to do three rounds of these three exercises, sometimes as many as four rounds of the following. Improve your calf flexibility with this dynamic calf stretch. This is great for shin splints, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, calf strain. The most important piece is that you need something underneath your foot in order to be able to get a little bit more of a stretch to your calf. So my heel is on the ground and then my toes are elevated off of the ground. So you can use something like this wedge or a rolled up yoga mat or even a towel. I'm gonna have my hips over my ankle. My hands are gonna be resting on this box. They could also be on these blocks where wherever I can be so then my back can stay flat. Most people can't bring their hands down toward the ground. So with my hips over my, over my ankle, my knees bent, I'm going to bend and straighten my knee. So as I straighten my knee, I should feel that stretching throughout my entire calf. If you're really tight, you might not be able to straighten your knee, that's fine. If you're not feeling as much of a stretch, then you can go down to something a little bit lower. But just make sure though that you're keeping your, your back flat so then you're not rounding because then we're going to be getting a stretch throughout the entire calf and even some of the hamstring, but we're stretching in a functional position. Do at least 10 to 15 reps and do this for a total of three times. Over the course of the repetitions, you're going to slowly begin to improve some of that flexibility. So don't force it in the very beginning. These heel toe slides were developed by a US men's gymnastics coach in order to help the athletes prevent shin splints. What you're gonna do to get started is you're gonna think of your both of your feet as a single unit. So I'm starting with my toes pointing forward. I'm gonna come up on my toes. I'm gonna to shift to the side, bring my heels down, then lift my toes up and then place them down. So I'm going to alternate between going up on my toes and then on my heels. And you wanna go both directions. What I'd suggest is doing 10 to 15 repetitions, um, going each way and doing that three times. A great exercise that you can try would be a high knee skip. The reason why we're doing the high knee skip is to introduce some load back into the lower leg, your calf, your Achilles, and the muscles in the front of your shin themselves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of a high knee and a skip on the foot that's down. And it might take a little practice to get comfortable with or used to, but it's really not so bad. So what you're gonna do is, is you're going to bring one leg up and then skip obviously on the down leg. So I'm gonna double tap on the leg that's down. You don't have to worry about going fast. It's kind of like I'm doing the running man. Focus on skipping low while bringing the other knee up into the air. You're going to do about 20 or so. You can also measure it out in distance. 
The most important part again is that you're skipping on that down leg as you bring the other knee up. Place this just before you go out for a run, just before you do whatever activity you're going to do that is dynamic and involves your lower body. You're gonna start off with a dynamic calf stretch. You're gonna do 10 to 15 repetitions. Then you're gonna move on to heel toe slides doing 10 to 15 each direction. Finally, you're gonna do 10 to 15 high knee skips on each side. You're gonna repeat that for a total of three rounds. Do this prior to working out because it's going to be a really great way to introduce some range of motion to that area and get those muscles firing. When I treat shin splints, um, I focus on the entire lower leg. So the way we typically think of the calf, um, as well as the front of the leg through like that shin area and even the foot. Because um, if you remember, some of the muscles that are in the shin area, they connect um, into the bottom of the foot as well. So we need to go through the entire length of the muscle. What I typically do is I first start with doing something like um, ischemic compression, soft tissue mobilization. That's what sometimes we call like this like trigger point therapy. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find just some of these areas that feel tight. I want the muscle to be in a relaxed position. So if I did this in a standing position, I won't be able to get as deep. The other thing that I like to do is bend the knee because then I can get a little bit deeper. Does it feel like that? Yes. yes. And then I can also then get to this like front shin area as well. So I'm going a, along the entire length of that muscle and I'm doing this for at least 15 minutes or so because there's a lot of musculature to, uh, to work through. After that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some type of instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization, what we call Graston or sometimes scraping. So I'm using some type of emollient because this is going to be helpful for reducing some of the friction. And then I'm going to go throughout the entire, um, throughout that entire area along that musculature. Um, avoid any bone because you're only gonna hurt yourself. You're not gonna help yourself with that. Another thing that I like to do is to use a massage gun. We um, use the Hyperice, the Hypervolt. Um, this is really helpful for improving some blood flow to an area, um, as well as um, providing some deep pressure, which is going to be helpful for getting that musculature to relax. Vibration is also really helpful for getting the, the muscle to relax as well. Again, what I need to do is I need to go through the entire length of the muscle, um, and then also even into that bottom part of the foot. In terms of other recovery equipment, um, we love to use the Mark Pro Plus because it's really helpful for reducing inflammation and then that will allow that muscle to be able to fire a little bit better. The other thing that we use is the Normatec, which is the, the compression, which is helpful for increasing blood flow. When we talk about helping the muscle to recover, the name of the game is increasing blood flow because that's what's going to help that muscle to reduce the amount of inflammation that it has and it's going to promote the healing. The other thing that's really important is to affect the connective tissue. So the connective tissue, which is like all around the muscle, um, as well as around groups of muscle. This is imperative for allowing that muscle to contract and relax the way that it's supposed to. A lot of times when we think about treating shin splints, we're thinking about this anterior tip or like the front part of the of the shin. And this is really important because this whole area, again, this connects to the interosseous membrane and to the bones. And this is also commonly where it's felt. So we want to make sure that we kind of work through this whole area. The other thing that I like to do is with that knee bent, I like to get on this like inside part of the shin. Let me show you on this side. I like to get on this inside part of the shin as well because I'm actually getting the muscles that are in the back of the leg, um, but I'm approaching them from the front. I think he feels this. <laughs> He's really tight right here. You can't, you can't get to the muscle the same way as if you're on your stomach, so that's why it's important to treat this both on your back and on your stomach. We've never met anyone that didn't get better from shin splints. It's not a terminal diagnosis. You do not have to quit doing what you're doing. You might have to modify. I will add that, and we get into this in the anatomy section, but shin splints can turn into stress reactions and those could turn into stress fractures, which is why it's very important to not only react to the shin splint, 
but to get ahead of it, and if you find that you're someone who has this reoccurring issue, consider doing the primer that we're giving you in this as just your regular daily warm up or cool down because you can, you, you can avoid just a lot of complication and avoid stopping. Sometimes people say that they have recurring shin splints, you know, so every time I try to increase my volume or every time I try to um, do some more hills, I always get shin splints. And really, honestly, what that just means is you just haven't done what really will help you to be able to address this. So here we are today um, giving you some of the, um, some of the knowledge um, and also some recommendations of ways you can actually address it. Yeah. And there is no reason why you should just have to be that person that always has these. We spoke to you today about a few of the things that we like to use. Uh, Dr. Chloe mentioned the Normatec, which is our preferred device that we use at Mobility Doc and we sell for compression, for increasing circulation, blood flow, and decreasing stiffness. Dr. Chloe also tortured me with the Hypervolt Pro 2.0 specifically, but that's a, another device that we just use a lot here and it it really if it's something that you can have we highly recommend getting one we tried some of the other massage guns and what we found was that for the price um you're going to get the the most benefit and versatility yeah, and follow us because we're going to go through product comparisons and more detail on that thought thank you for watching and listening we appreciate going on this journey with us and allowing us to help you to be better and we look forward to sharing more information every single week. Join all of our socials, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, threads, and all of the ones that keep popping up because we are going to continue to use our experience with thousands of patients and our own personal experiences because we are just like you to be able to give you what you need to help yourself to never stop.